Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project podcast. In just a moment, you're going to hear a powerful and inspiring conversation between myself and one of our Fit Father program members, Mike Fairley. Mike is 51 years young. He lives in Canada, and over the past year, Mike's used this Fit Father program to drop over 70 pounds and dramatically improve his health, his mindset, and his overall routine. And Mike's going to share some fascinating things about the parallels of his life with his own father's life. And one of the things I love about this particular conversation is Mike just really shares the real talk about what he likes, what he doesn't like, and how he's actually adapted this program to work for him. Self-admittedly, Mike doesn't love exercising, yet he gets it in because he knows it's beneficial for him and he finds a way to make it work into his routine. And I won't steal any of the thunder for this episode, but Mike shares a couple resounding messages that you'll hear repeated throughout this conversation that I think are some of the best practical, simple advice for anyone starting out. So if you're a newbie on this program, tune in because you're going to hear about how a guy like Mike lost the weight by doing the consistent stuff every single day. And if you're a veteran on this program, I think it's really powerful to listen to Mike's conversation to see the trajectory where he's heading the value he finds in this, and how committed he is to this new lifestyle and this way of living. So without further ado, let's get into today's powerful conversation with Fit Father, Mike Fairley. All right, Mike, welcome officially to the Fit Father Project podcast, my friend. I'm so happy that you're here. I appreciate the invite. I was a little hesitant, so we'll see how this goes. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your honesty, and I know it's certainly a thing to hop on a podcast and to share your story and some personal stuff with so many people listening. And I can assure you this, that your story is going to be very inspirational for many guys and it will touch some hearts. And so I'm glad of your willingness. And on that note, I'd love to know a little bit more about your background. So please tell us um, name, age, where you're from, and a little bit about your family and what you do for work. Okay. Uh, My name is Mike Fairley. I am currently 51. I live in a little town near Lake Erie, just south of Windsor, Ontario, which is like the uh, on t- Canada U.S. border, mm-hmm. um, married to my wife Sky for 27 years. Nice. Uh, three kids. They're not really kids anymore. They're all adults now. My my youngest, my daughter, just turned 18 in December, so I have no children anymore. All all adults now. Um, I'm a service manager for an office equipment company, uh, and a tech as well. So I'm out there fixing the machines as well. And that's, that's about it. Nice. Um, this is little on fact, but I also uh, lived in Ontario, Canada for some time. Oakville, Ontario. I grew up Oakville, there so in a little up bit. Up near Toronto. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. that's cool. Um, I'd love to know, how'd you find out about the program? Like take us back and what year was it and how'd you find out about it initially? Um, I believe it was Facebook initially, mm-hmm. just one of those random ads that popped up. Um, probably something that my phone heard me talking about. So I was uh, just perusing Facebook one day, and uh, this would be a, almost a year ago, so around April, May of, of last year, mm-hmm. and saw the ad, and it, I believe it mentioned, it was the one that mentioned the, the free uh, meal plan and the, the workout, mm-hmm. and I figured free, sure, it's free, it's never free, but I, I clicked on the link and checked it out, and printed off the information that was available with the, that particular ad. And for about a week, maybe two weeks, I followed just that simple two-page instruction with uh, the Apex 8 and the, the perfect plate meal plan. And I saw real changes in just those couple weeks. So I, I bit the bullet and jumped in with both feet. Nice. I'm glad I'm glad you clicked on that ad. And our end, we you know, it's 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 fun to hear that our ads work because I'll tell you as this like small business owner, it's not always easy to like find and attract the right guys. And it's so humbling to me that you're here now, having done the whole Facebook thing, clicked an ad, saw some results of the free stuff, and now you're here. So I guess a big question that we'll back into the specifics, but since joining, how has this program changed your life for the better? Uh, it's it's been huge. Um... I've lost, as of today, about 76 and a half pounds. Wow. Um, so it, it's a huge, I mean, huge change. I've gone from a size 42 pant, which I was pushing the limits of, mm-hmm. uh, to now I'm wearing size 36. And I actually, 
as incentive to keep going because I've completed phases one through three. Mm -hmm. I went and bought myself my favorite pair of jeans in a size 34. Nice. Which I can currently fit in. There's, they're still a little tight, but I, I can get them on. Nice. So to that kind of a change is, I, could, I wouldn't have believed it if someone told me that it could happen. Um, I have more energy. Um, I'm not tired all the time. Um, I can get up a flight of stairs without having to take five minutes to catch my breath. I mean, it, it's, it's been a life changing, uh, activity or, or lifestyle really, because it, it is a lifestyle. Yeah. So it's, it's been a lifestyle change and a life changing one. Nice. And now with, with those changes that you have made in this period of time, which is like a little, you know, basically a year, a little under a year. What was going on in your life back when you were joining the program? Like when you first were starting out and when you were clicking on the ad, where was your health at? Where was your life at? Where was your mindset at? What was going on that kind of prompted you to even like want to improve things? So to, to answer that question, we really have to go back probably almost 30 years. Okay. Um, when I was in my early 20s at university, um, came home for my dad's 50th birthday and the, the next day we took him into the hospital with, uh, he had chest pains. He had already known that he had heart issues, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was basically a panic attack that, that he had the day he turned 50. Um, from there, they found out that he had, uh, he needed a triple bypass. Oh. Um, he was always a, a big guy, not as tall as I am. I'm like 6'2". Um, he's about five, six inches shorter than I am, but probably double what my weight was at that time. So he's a big guy. Um, and I watched my dad go through that and I swore to myself at that time that that was never going to be me. I didn't want that. Um, so I was young in my twenties. So I went back to university and I started working out and got in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. Time passes. I got married, started having kids. The, the time, at least in my mind, wasn't there to keep working out. Yep. So I gained weight, made a lot of horrible choices in food. I was drinking a lot of pop. Mm -hmm. um, probably in my late 30s, um, I was sitting downstairs drinking a Coke, watching TV, and I felt something weird. And took my pulse, and it was it scared me because it would beat beat and then stop and then pick up beating again and then stop. So I went up, talked to my wife, said, check my pulse, please. And she said, yeah, we're going to the hospital. Turns out I had uh, an irregular heartbeat caused by caffeine. Mm -hmm. um, so quit cold turkey caffeine the next day. Um, haven't touched a pop since. Wow. Um, and thought, okay, I'm good now. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I've, I've taken care of this issue. Um, I should say I've been, I was through that whole time, actually from my early twenties, I've been an avid hockey player. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my keeping active, um, all the time, play hockey a couple times a week. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, okay. I'm a big guy. I carry my weight well. I'm not in terrible shape. I can go out there and I can play an hour, hour and a half, two hours of hockey. I'm good. Um, and I've done that all this time, right up till now, um, all up till COVID. We haven't, haven't been able to play since then, but, um, fast forward another couple of years, my, I turned 50, mm -hmm. um, and there's a picture of me on my birthday, sitting on my back deck, um, and I looked at that picture and it shocked me, um, how out of shape I was. And I thought, oh my God, I'm my dad. <laughs> that uh, the person that I said I was never going to be, not that I, anything wrong with my dad, my dad's a great guy, but physically I never wanted that for myself. Mm -hmm. And that picture, uh, it jolted me because I was my dad. I could almost probably find a picture of my dad looking exactly like me at 50. Um, so from that point, I started thinking I got to do something. Um, I started looking around thinking I'll just do some stuff on myself. Um, and that never really worked out. 
And then within, so that would have been 2021. So within six, seven months of that is when I, I saw your ad mm -hmm. and started the program and it's, it's worked, it's done wonders. So that's, that's kind of a roundabout answer to your question. No, it's, it's a powerful story. I mean, the contrast with your dad's life and, and yours at that point, and the fact that you were able to take a different road than him is, is really beautiful. And as you're starting phase one of FF30X, I know you know this intimately, like one of the aspects of the program is not just the nutrition, the exercise, but getting very clear on your deep motivations for like why this health stuff matters. Did you write a mission statement? And if you did or didn't, what were some of your deep motivations for starting the program when you were getting clear on those? What motivated you in those early days? Um, so, so I did write one. Um, I haven't revisited it and I probably should. Uh, but I know I did mention uh, my father's condition as as a factor um, and that I, I wanted to be, I didn't want to go through that process that he went through and I wanted to be there for my family. And I was getting concerned that those things weren't going to happen mm -hmm. or that something serious would happen um, and, and I wouldn't be able to be there for them. Mm -hmm. So my family and, and I guess selfishly for myself as well, yeah. I didn't like what I saw in those pictures and I, I didn't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. So, so those were really the motivators to, yeah. to get to a, a position where I, I knew I was going to be healthy and around. Mm -hmm. So, and so to today you've been through phases one through three of FF 30 X yes. and you're cycling back down to back through phase one. So that's, you know, six to nine months, you know, basically on this program, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've overcome? on this program, like in the process of change, what are some of the challenges you've overcome? Uh, my, my biggest challenge is that I really don't like working out. I'm not a gym guy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't for the most part enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I, I do it and I feel great when I'm done, but it's always a challenge to get it started. Mm -hmm. um, I, I said at the beginning of this that I was hesitant to come on here because I, I I've always, I, well, not always. I feel like I'm maybe not the best example of how this program should work because I don't go to the gym. I use free weights. I've got uh, a good boss who luckily enough, we've got some weights at the office, uh, adjustable dumbbells that I can use, but I don't go to the gym and I can't see myself going to the gym. Um, I haven't used your shakes and that's nothing against the shakes, more that it's, uh, getting them across to Canada is not the cheapest thing to do for sure. And, um, to run a blender at six 30 in the morning, um, <laughs> my wife and my daughter would probably kill me. So <laughs> just probably not the best idea. Um, and like I said to my wife, I, when, when the invitation came through, I said, I don't think I'm going to do it because I haven't been perfect on this program. Hmm. And she said, well, maybe that's what somebody needs to hear Yeah, is that, you don't have to be perfect for this program to work. Yeah. You follow the guidelines and, and do the right, make the right decisions, take the learning that you provide and you can do this program without being perfect. Yeah. So I, my challenge is, like I said, getting myself motivated to do the exercises. Mm -hmm. Once I get started, I'm fine, mm -hmm. but mentally getting myself there is, has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think the way that you've laid it out, with the different phases and even within the phases that the break in the different exercises and changing the routines has really helped. Mm -hmm. It hasn't allowed me to get bored with any of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, th and, and I'm a routine and schedule kind of guy. Yeah. And the way that you've built the program is, is perfect for me because it allows me to create a routine. I have a, a meal routine. I do the breakfast first thing in the morning, then lunch, and then dinner, I don't have to think about when I'm going to do those things because they're, it's routine. Um, I have my, my workout scheduled Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, I have my, my walking in between or, or pretty much every day. Yeah. I don't have to think about that. So you, the way you've created the program is very simple to follow um, and works great for a, a routine guy like me. Nice. I, I appreciate you sharing everything that you just did there. And I want to get a little bit deeper into unpacking 
the nutrition routine that works specifically for you. And I also love that you did share the fact that honestly, exercise doesn't jazz you up yet. You still, because of your goals, make the time to do at least three a week with the walking. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that's really, really great. And I'll say this too, you know, I have the benefit of being the guy who created this thing to say that my number one intention was to help create a framework that any guy could use to adapt to his life. So the fact that you don't use the shakes or do some other things that I recommend, I don't care whatsoever. I'm just so grateful that you found something that does work for you. So on the nutrition front, what does work for you as a standardized breakfast? What do you typically do for like a breakfast, a lunch, and maybe some dinner ideas to give guys an idea of, you know, your kind of flow and your routine? Yeah. So my, my breakfast goes all the way back to that free meal plan, Mm -hmm. uh, where I think it was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was in that field, free meal there was, plan. There was an omelet recipe in there, I think. Yeah, so I basically take that recipe. I can't make an omelet. I'm terrible at that. So <laughs> I just scramble everything. Yeah. So I have scrambled eggs with uh, peppers, mushrooms, spinach, and some turkey bacon. Yeah, that's, exactly, the free, that's exactly what was yeah. in the one-day meal plan. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've been doing pretty much the whole time. Um, on occasion, if I want to change something up, I'll have uh, some Ezekiel bread or... Uh, an Ezekiel equivalent, which I found a decent one here. Nice. Um, with a little bit of peanut butter mm-hmm. and some fruit. Um, lunch is usually uh, some kind of perfect place leftover. Yeah. Or I make a big batch of turkey chili, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll take one of those. Um, I've managed to ma- wean myself off the snack portion in between lunch and dinner. Mm-hmm. And then dinner is typically some kind of perfect plate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't do a lot of pre-cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's tough with my family because they all are kind of picky. Mm-hmm. But they're supportive and they generally eat what I make. I do most of the cooking. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll do something. We'll cook up some chicken breasts and uh, I'll do a, a lot of vegetables, fry up some vegetables. Or uh, during the summer, I'll grill the vegetables. Mm-hmm and some kind of healthy carb, like a sweet potato or quinoa or brown rice, and just do the perfect plate. Yeah. And it's, it's simple. And again, the, the routine makes it that much simpler for me. Yeah. I want to ask you on that. What are some of like, um, things you've learned about nutrition from this program? Key insights about how to be consistent or just some light bulb aha moments, anything that really stuck out to you that's made this like a kind of profound shift to the way you think about eat eating and do eat regularly so i would say the the portioning and the perfect plate was a big thing for me because i would always be the guy that would go back for seconds or heap up my plate Mm -hmm. um and the the perfect plate model has helped me with that uh i don't I don't count calories or look at any of that kind of stuff. So I don't know that, uh, that's been of any use to me, Mm -hmm. but, uh, looking at food differently, I guess the, the vegetables, I wasn't a big vegetable guy, but maybe it's getting older and my palate has changed. I I eat a lot more vegetables now and I really enjoy them. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that necessarily anything great. I don't have a great answer for that, I guess. No, that was, that was a totally fine answer. I mean, the distinction of the perfect plate and just having the structure itself where you know, like, this is how I approach it and it's not just, like, free-for-all is, yeah. is, like, a very, very strong framework you can use for the rest of your life. Have you been hungry while you're losing, you know, close to 80 pounds? You know, like, what's it been like on the hunger front? How have you dealt with hunger or maybe even cravings or stuff like that? Uh, I still get cravings, uh, especially later at night after dinner um i've made some concessions find uh either something healthy or a piece of fruit or something if if i really have a a serious craving at night um pepperoni sticks or beef jerky have been a go-to okay um i try to steer away from all the sweet stuff Mm -hmm. and when i do have something sweet it's it's a a treat so it's got to be a special night or or one of the free meals or something like that Yep. Try and steer away from the, the cookies and the, the chocolate and all the, the junk that I used to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I, no, I mean, that's good. I mean, I, I think the idea of just having, you know, you have some like go-to healthy snacks, 
slotted in for when you might have a craving and something like salt and protein, like the beef stick or the pepperoni stick can like take the edge off and is a ton better than having like crushing some ice cream or some cookies like late at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I'd like to chat with you about the exercise portion. I mean, you're now doing serious lifting in your fifties. Like yep. what have you learned about your body? What kind of gains and progressions have you made changes to your fitness and I just love for you to share some of your insights and your experience, like doing some serious exercise, even as a man who doesn't necessarily love it. Like what's it, what's it, what's it been like for you? Yeah, I, I don't love it, but I, I do it. And it's, I do get the satisfaction at the end, knowing that I've done it. Um, when I first started doing the apex, it was apex eight, which was the free part of it. And I thought, okay, this is, this is really tough. It kicked my butt the first time I did it. I think I got to maybe five the first time I tried it. Mm -hmm. After about a week, I was hitting the eight. Uh, okay, this is something I can do. Um, then I started the, the full program to only realize that I actually have to go two more steps now. <laughs> so I, I managed to do it. Um, the first go round of phase one, I only did apex because I didn't have access to a gym. So I, I didn't do the, the big five routines at all. Um, and then moving into phase two, when that, that weight training actually came in, I found I actually almost enjoyed those routines yeah. more than the MRT stuff. For sure. And that kept me going. Um, I didn't think that I could see the kind of changes in my body from the, more from the MRT workouts. Um, I knew from back in the university days that I could build muscle if I really wanted to. Um, but I didn't think I could do the, the, the MRT style stuff mm -hmm. and, and getting through it and doing it, even though maybe I didn't do it every single day or didn't do it perfectly. That was, that was a big motivator for me yeah. to know that I could do it. For sure. Um, now that I've circled back around, I have added in the, the big five back into phase one. Nice. Um, I worked out a routine that I can do with the just straight dumbbells. And uh, I did one last night and I'm sore today, <laughs> and, but it's a good sore. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, it's just doing it, just the fact that I can do it, um, whether I enjoy it or not, the satisfaction that I am doing it, that's, that's a big deal. For sure. I, I think that's one of the most powerful aspects of exercise is the fact that for maybe in many years, like a lot of guys who come on this program, finally get the chance of overcoming something hard on a regular basis. And that retrains the mind as you're actually training the body. Super cool. And I know you mentioned like walking and maybe we were chatting about that a little bit before we even like hit mm -hmm. record on this episode. That's important to you. I know it is. And I'd love to know like why it is and what, what, what relationship you now have to walking. And also I want to point out that, you know, right now we're recording this in winter time and you're up in Canada and there's a lot of people who completely stop walking for a number of months because it's cold as shit outside and yep. it requires some, you know, a, a little bit of grit and the right kind of clothing. Um, why tell me about walking? How, how has this become a part of your life? Why is it important? What benefits do you get? And when do you walk? I, I really wish I had started it earlier. Um, I don't think I started the walking until maybe beginning of phase two or halfway through phase two. Mm -hmm. um, and it was more just to, I, something to fill in the gaps between the, the scheduled workouts. Mm -hmm. um, I walk almost every day. So during work days or, or workout days, I'll walk at lunch. Um, so I've, I've worked myself out three or four different two and a half kilometer loops around where I work. Mm -hmm. Um, and the off days I'll walk five to six kilometers at night. Nice. So after dinner, I sit for about let digest for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then I just go out and walk mm -hmm. and I've got a f two, five and a half K loops and a one six, just over six K loop that I'll do. Nice. Um, it was easier during the summer because the we daylight stays around, sticks around till seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Well, right now it's dark by five thirty. Yeah. So I had to make some adjustments. I went and bought myself a headlamp. Um, I've got uh, a LED uh, armband that I wear, reflective clothing because I don't really feel like getting run over. 
Um, so I get out there and I, I just go. And I've worked myself from when I first started, I was doing about a kilometer in about nine and a half to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And now I'm consistently in the, the mid to high eight minute range. Nice. So I just go out and do it. And I find it really lets me clear my head. Um, I'll just plug some earbuds in and crank some music and go walk. Mm -hmm. And it gets everything else out of my head for the, for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And let's, and I work up a good sweat and I feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah. So if, if I could tell new guys starting out, walk, get out there and walk. It's something that almost everybody can do yeah. unless you have some kind of limitations. Um, just get out there and walk. If, if nothing else, at least you're doing something, you're moving Yeah. and it'll make a big difference. I completely agree with you. And, and like, I'd like to ask you a specific question as a guy who doesn't necessarily love exercise. Do you categorize that mentally as exercise or does it feel like something different? Well, I, no, I know it's exercise because I'm working up a sweat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why it's different in my head, yeah. but, but it is. Yeah. Um, I, I just enjoy walking. I enjoy getting out there and not having to think about anything, just concentrate on what that next step right in front of me. Yeah. Um, I wish where I live, uh, it's pretty flat, not very scenic unless you get down by the lake. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I had more trails around. I wish I had some of the scenery that I see other guys being able to walk through. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, so I just walk roads. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually kind of nice right now in the dark and the cold. There's nobody else out there. Yeah. And, uh, I can just be by myself and out there. Yeah. That solitude is restorative in its own right. And just getting outside is, and I also tend to think from my own reflection, and maybe you'll feel like this is true too, that it's that stress and pressure release valve. Like it, it is like, you can just kind of like un de-stress and that can replace a lot of these old bad habits that many of us used to do in the past where you turn to other things whether it's a drink or food or just sitting down with TV, like the walk can help like buffer that out, you know? So I know we've talked a lot about walking, but like, is that is, like, I'm sure that in some sense that's been true for you as well. It is actually. And I find that if, if I'm not doing something and I'm getting bored, those are the times when I struggle. Yeah. Cause I, I want to, I'm bored. So I'm going to go eat or I'm bored. I'm going to go grab something. Yep. Um, walking for that, hour 50 minutes to an hour that's that much less time that i have to worry about trying to find something to do or or grabbing a junk food out of the cupboard or or something like that so it's just yeah it, it keeps me occupied and it is a de-stressor definitely a de-stressor good advice walk more for sure i want to pivot a little bit and ask you you know I, you've probably heard the term non-scale victories been thrown around mm -hmm. whether it's in our messages or some of the the groups can you tell us some stories about some NSVs that come to the top of your mind if you have some along the way, whether it's things your family said, coworkers, the experience of being able to do something you hadn't done before, the 34 inch pants. I'm sure you've had plenty of That's, NSVs. But that like, was a big one. Yep. The, the dropping from a 42 down to the, the 36 pants that I'm now wearing, having to basically buy a whole new wardrobe from getting out of the double XL shirts down to a large. Um, so those were huge victories. Um, with my job, I do go out to customers. Mm -hmm. Um, there'll be some customers that I haven't seen for six, eight months. Mm -hmm. And recently I've been to a couple and they're like, oh my God, you look amazing. What are you doing? And I, I tell them what I'm doing. Um, I go into some doctor's offices and one of the first things they say to me is you're okay, right? Well, yes, I'm okay. This was on purpose. I'm doing this on purpose. So yeah, it's that that's good when when people that I don't really know or I know casually mm -hmm. um, when they're saying things, because I think with family and with myself as well, I didn't see the, the massive changes or they didn't appear as massive to me because I see myself every day or my family sees me every day. Mm -hmm. um, where I really noticed it was those before and after pictures, which you recommended, yeah. which that was a big, tough step right at the very beginning to take that picture and post that picture. 
But when I look at my picture from day one versus my picture at the end of phase three, that's when I can really see it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and those pictures, those are motivating. And that's, that's a big NSV too, to go from, from where I was in, in day one to, I guess, uh, mid-December, so. Totally. I wanna ask you, where do you wanna be in five to 10 years from now as it relates to your health or, or anything that you've kind of realized with some more clarity from this life change you've made? Um, right now, I still wanna lose. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting at 203. If I can get in the, into the 190s, which is somewhere, I, I joke, but I think it's probably true, I think I graduated grade eight at 180, right? So I, I've, those are numbers that I've, I've not seen since I was before yeah. I could drive. Yeah. So if, if I can get somewhere in the, the 190s, I think I'd be good with that weight wise. Mm -hmm. And then I think I might pivot to the OSM program okay. and try and put on a little bit of muscle. I'm, I'm a little nervous about that because I, like I said, I'm not a big gym guy mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I don't see myself really counting calories. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's part of that program. I haven't read through it, but from what I see on the, the Brotherhood, that's, that's a thing. Um, but I, I think I'd like to try it and see what I, what I can accomplish that way. You can but definitely think, do OSM without the calorie counting. It just, you know, it's helpful sometimes to be precise, but that's awesome. And I, yeah. I also know the fact that you're recycling through one, maybe two, three, certainly in phase two or three recycle, you're going to, lose the the next 10 to 15 pounds to be in the 190 range yeah i've been here in this range somewhere between 205 i've been as low as 198 but that was after like a two-day fast mm -hmm. um and then it bumped back up again sure uh but i've been in this range for about a month or so mm -hmm. so it's definitely slowed but i'm not stopping it's it's i want to see how far i can go nice that's a great answer now, what's some advice you have for new guys starting out? I know you shared some, so it could be a recap of like some stuff you've already previously shared, but for new guys yeah. starting out, what are a couple of like punchy bits of advice you have? Okay. So number one would be the walking, get out and walk. Um, there's very few reasons why you can't just get out and walk. You don't have to walk fast. You don't have to walk far. Just get out and do something. Mm -hmm. um, take those before and after photos because that, that day one photo can be your motivation when you plateau or when you think you've stalled or when you think you might want to quit. Mm -hmm. um, something I learned late is uh, don't compare yourself to other people on the, in the brotherhood because you're not the same as everybody else on the brotherhood. Um, I see some of these guys with that have worked their butts off and, and have the six pack abs and, and are absolutely ripped is like 5% body fat. If I tried to do that, I would, I would be so discouraged. I would probably quit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I heard a quote, it was a, a weird, another weird random video. Um, and the quote was comparison is the thief of joy. And, and that really struck a chord with me. If, if I'm going to start comparing myself to other guys, then I'm not going to really be happy with what I've already accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's important to be happy with what you've already done. Yeah. So, so I guess my, my advice would be just because you see other guys in the brotherhood with these massive changes, don't be discouraged by that because your story, your journey is going to be different than everybody else's. Yeah. That's so. a one, wonderful perspective. And I'm really glad that you brought that particular quote up as well. And did you do anything intentionally to celebrate your wins along the way? Like, was there, was there a process of like journaling? I know you definitely took the photos as you mentioned and, and stuff like that. Um, or, or do you have any plans on how do you, how, how do you move forward with that wisdom of comparison is the thief of joy over the next several months as you're going through to honor your own unique progress and celebrate your success along the way? I haven't really thought in that terms. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know I kind of celebrated the first real big change by going out and getting the new wardrobe. Yeah. That, was, that was a fun thing for me to actually go out and buy large sized yeah. shirts and 
size 36 pants. Sure. Um, that was kind of a celebration. My wife was there with me, helping me pick stuff out. She's been super supportive the whole way through. Um, but I haven't really thought about it because I, I don't want, I don't want to set an end. Yeah. Um, I don't want to have a goal line yet. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know what that's going to be. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't want to set a goal line and then realize that I could go further. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I haven't really, I haven't really thought in those terms yet. Yeah. That's a, that's a great perspective though. And I, and it's actually really relates to like one of my last questions I have for you is what's some wisdom or advice you have for guys who are more veteran like you. And I'll define veteran as they've gone through, let's say phase one through three, they've done the bulk of the FF 30 X program. What's some advice, words to words of wisdom or perspectives that you have that you believe are very helpful? That's a, that's a tough question because I I'm not super great at giving other people advice, mm-hmm. um, and especially guys that have been at it longer than I have. Sure. Um, I guess what I'd say is stay active in the in the brotherhood. Um, Use your your knowledge to help the new people that are coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been fun for me as well. Yeah. Uh, the the Facebook group is great. There's a, a ton of guys on there that helped me early on. Um, there's guys that that have been through the same things. Um, be active in it. Yeah. Uh, take the knowledge that you've gained. Share it. Uh, be supportive be out there for the other guys. Um, there, there's, there's some great guys on there that just have so much knowledge. Um, I could name them off. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but a guy like Shane Dixon, Oh yeah. Who, who's been doing it for so many years. And if you need to find something, he's going to know where it is and he's going to send you a link. Those kind of guys, like he's been there from, from my day one and, and super helpful. So, be that kind of guy yeah, and, and help people as much as you can give them information, answer their questions. For sure. I'm glad you mentioned Shane too. Cause I mean, what a blessing he is to be able to be that encouragement for so many new people coming through and like those little helpful tips that are shared along the way, those breadcrumbs, if you will, for you can make a big difference. They can give you the encouragement you need at that moment to then break through and have success and then turn around and be able to help other guys. So, I want to give you the floor one more time and to give you the opportunity really to have any thanks or shout outs, whether that's someone on our team who helped you, you know, Ben, Catherine, Craig, anyone, Jen, anyone on our success team or, you know, or anyone in the brotherhood you want to shout out or just any final things you'd like to say. All right. So, so Kat has been amazing and Ben has been amazing. Those are two that I've reached out to with questions and they're, they're so responsive. They usually get back right away. Um, Kat is, I never talked to her personally, but she is just in her emails, the responses. She has so much energy. I don't know where she gets it from. Me neither. Um, (laughs) just the, I, I can't imagine if she's like that all day, like how anybody can be miserable around her. Um, Craig as well had some questions with the, the websites and, uh, billing because I did just recently sign on for life. Uh, but I had just started nice. another quarter, so I had some questions about that. He's he's super responsive. Yeah. Um, the the Facebook group is a big thing. Mm-hmm. I would recommend everybody to to jump into it um, and be open and be vulnerable on it um, because it is. You named it the Brotherhood. And yeah. I never saw myself as, as a bro guy. Mm-hmm. So I was really hesitant to get in there. I didn't know what it was going to be. But it really is just a, a super support group for, for everybody in this program. Um, and you can ask any question you want. And, and there's somebody on there that's going to have an answer or direct you to where you can find an answer. Mm-hmm. So when you start out, get on there as soon as possible and be vulnerable Put yourself out there. Ask questions. There's no such thing as a, a stupid question. Mm-hmm. Um, and walk. <laughs> that's that's my biggest thing. Get get out there and walk. Get yeah. out there and start moving. Um, if you don't think you can do the apex, 
do what you can. Don't be, don't be upset or, or down on yourself because you did only five rounds. At least you did it. Yeah. Um, start. Take that first step. The first and, step's the hardest. And I'll say, too, with what you experienced, you can astonish yourself with what you can accomplish oh, by just sure. doing the daily, the daily work. I, I did the math early on with the Apex. And if someone had told me a month after I started that I could do 100 push-ups and 100 uh, shoulder presses and 100 renegade rows and 100 swings and 100... I missed one in there. Squats, yeah. Squats. Yeah, squats. If, I could, if someone told me I'd be doing 100 of those in under an hour, I would have laughed at them. Yeah. But within a month, well, less than a month, I was doing those things. So, yeah. Mike, I'm really proud of you. I, I seriously, appreciate it. And I, I'm so glad you, you were able to come on here and share your unique slice of this program, how well it's worked for you. I'm so happy that you have to buy a new wardrobe, and I wish you so much success in this year ahead. Thank you for being a part of this brotherhood and this program and, and for coming on and sharing your story. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. I hope it's helpful for somebody. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank you.